Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bridging the Gap. I am Byron Nash and we have my homeboy, Johnny Angel. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm excited today because uh, our guest yeah. is another dear friend of mine from back in the day, right? Yeah. And he's uh, represented very well here in my museum and a whole bit, but I, I love the fact that he's, he's, he's a wit and we're going to have fun with him. Right? Yeah. But I'm talking about the great Norm Nardini. Right? Yeah, so, that's pretty legend. Yes, he is. And uh, he'll be in the chat with us. And of course, I'm hoping we can jam at the end. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so speaking of like legends and people who've been around for a long time, I was um, listening to a lot of older music like I normally do. I was thinking about people that I never got to see and that um, were kind of gone too early. And one of my people that I regret never seeing was Prince. Oh. And uh, I think people forget like how great of a guitar player he was, but then just because he's so known for like the everything, you know, the yes. dance, the outfits, all the kind of eccentric things that he did. But as a guitar player, he's sort of one of my favorite yeah. um, influences that I always forget to list when people ask me. It's like, guitar, top yeah. Ten. Yeah. And I feel like he's one of those uh, icons that are kind of gone too soon that people or um, sometimes we'll overlook like what his impact was. And I'm like, I'll see something, I'm like, oh, that's a Prince thing. And yeah. he did it when you couldn't do it, when you weren't allowed to do it, yes. and how he went against the grain. And I like those artists, kind of like Norm, how they yeah. kind of carve their own way Absolutely. and go against the grain of what everyone else is doing. They do what's right to them, and that's what's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, you know, and when you talk about Prince, man, I, 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 I'm a movie nut, as you yeah. know. And, and remember when he did the movie Purple Rain, mm -hmm. which I thought was it, here he was as an actor. But you notice everything he did had something to do with his guitar. He's riding his motorcycle and he has his guitar on his yeah. back. You know, it's like well, he's really just acting as himself. Right? That's right. <laughs> but that, that's cool stuff. You know, yeah. I, I love anything like that. In fact, I love soundtracks. Anything that had major artists that are performing on it. You know, yeah, like, that would be my favorite soundtrack of would all it? time. Yeah, I think so. That and the Wiz. Oh, the, the Wiz was good. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Of course, Quincy you Jones. Got, and, and you got Michael Jackson mm -hmm. singing, and of course, yeah. Diana Ross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, and you know what was cool about that? Since we're, we're talking about, I like Nip Nipsey Ru Russell's. Mm -hmm. and he was the Tin Man. Yeah, you know, that's and, great. Yeah, and, and was kind of a dancer. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was <laughs> cool stuff. But just speaking of that, um, you know, I was listening to this week uh, is soundtracks. Yeah. Because we're, and uh, one of the soundtracks I found was from an old movie that was turned into a soundtrack, and, and it was called Savage Seven. It's a hmm. motorcycle movie, right? This is the seventies, but this is what's cool about it, right? You have this 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 great uh, movie, and it has all this stuff, but the the soundtrack was. Cream and Iron Butterfly. Oh. <laughs> the whole soundtrack? Most of it, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which is kind of cool, you know what I mean? It's different. That's what, that's what I like. Well, what's interesting about music, and I think it's really easy for people to take for granted, you know, you see a movie, like before I was in the music business and older, I always assumed like the actors could hear the music while they're acting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but that lets you know how much music really supports the visuals and yes. how it has to kind of evoke a feeling and an emotion. Yeah. You know, so that's pretty cool. I actually have a record, not quite a soundtrack record, but um, I love Led Zeppelin, <laughs> big time. And so one of the, you know, I guess another soundtracky thing would be Song Remains the Same, which really got me deeply into uh, Led Zeppelin and sort of that kind of long form songwriting and yeah. parts that don't come up again in the song. Like that's a certain style, you know, and I think a lot of that happened in the 70s. Absolutely. Too, you know? Absolutely. Um, but this is sort of like the soundtrack of my teens, you know, so <laughs> this really stands out for me because there's so many epic songs on here and just a lot of the production layers with the guitars yeah. really had an impact on how I actually play now. So this is my See, record of the week. I like the influence in there. Oh, good. It's all over the place. It's all over the place. <laughs> well, well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be having Norm Nardini join us. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right. Jack in the Box. Welcome to Jack in the Box. And today I'm thinking about some old friends. I'm talking about thinking of the monkeys. Remember the monkeys when the TV program first came on, right? Later in life, I got to work with these guys. Davy Jones had a horse farm in central Pennsylvania. But I remember how their merchandising just went on fire, right? Just even postcards. Like there, there's them. And, and then there's the same one, but in color, so you buy two, right? That's the way it was. And then you got the monkeys and full headshots, you know? But that's the kind of stuff that I love to talk about because it was the music they brought to us, but they also brought the collectible part of it, and I loved it. You know why? Because it's Ginchy stuff.
Welcome back. I'll tell you what, we're sitting here with my, my old buddies right here. I'm talking about Norm Nardini, the legend. I do Norm. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's a real pressure to be here today. It's a real pressure. No, actually, I'm all excited to be down here. Down by the water, downtown Pittsfield, Pennsylvania, man. <laughs> Love this. Being included in something snaps my girdle, man. <laughs> That's going to leave a paint mark right on the right over. Let's go back, Norm. You know, we, we've worked together a lot over the years, and um, you, you're still the legend that everyone talks about. I mean, you're still, you're still doing your thing. And oh, I didn't hear that. <laughs> Could you repeat that? Yeah, the legend. <laughs> and, and it's kind of cool because um, I, I've known how you've worked all over, through the years, and we have a lot of mutual friends in the business yes, that sir. came up the same way, right? But I, there's some things I didn't know until I started reading it today. Like when you very, this, I'm talking about before the diamonds, right? I never realized you were a bass player. And you well, I was, as a little kid, I was an accordion player. You know, back in the 1950s, every Italian I family, <laughs> they would make one of the boys play accordion yeah, in every Italian family. And if they didn't have any boys in the family, they'd make one of the girls, the girls do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that girl would hate herself for the rest of her life. Yeah. She would suffer with a lot of trauma. But uh, yeah, I started off on accordion. And the best thing about that was... I was a little kid and I could see and hear melody and chords, yeah. bass notes That's and right. chords. Yeah. And so when I was a little kid, I started hearing music as oh, yeah. a complete thing. That makes sense. Cool. And when I started, I started playing guitar when I was like 11. And, uh, and, it all, and then when I started doing things, that I always thought of all the music before I, before I thought of playing guitar or playing keyboards or singing. I always thought of the music as one thing. So I always want to tell the drummer what to play, tell the bass player what to play. Yeah. Yeah. As a little kid, even though I didn't know what I was doing, I always wanted to make sure yeah. the music was our music from the get and from the bottom. Yes, yes. Right. It made me a weird person. Yeah. <laughs> it made other musicians not want to hang around me, or it made them really want to hang around yeah. me. Because, you know what I mean? I hear you. And the other thing that is that I love about you is you're a great showman and you're a great player, but you know, you, you also have so many songs that you've written, man. You write tons of stuff. Yeah, yeah I write all the time. And, and we were doing a gig together the one time, and um, we were honoring Bill Mazeroski, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of crazy because Norm said, I wrote a song about Bill Mazeroski, and he did. And he played it. It was kind of cool. What, yeah. What made you do that? I know you're a baseball fan. but I mean, I met Maz the year before with those yeah. golf events. Yeah. And, and I thought about it, if my dad was alive, how proud he yeah. would be to know that I was rubbing up against Matt. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I was watching a game with my old lady one day, and, and there was a montage on, like in the commercials, and it showed the montage of Mazeroski Way and General Robinson Boulevard down by the mm -hmm. ballpark. And as soon as I saw that Mazeroski Way, I looked at my old lady, I said, hey, Toots, I'm writing that song. It's going to be called Mazeroski Way. She <laughs> says, when are you going to write? I said, I'm going to write it right now. Right now. Nice. And it says, born in West Virginia, raised in Ohio, barely out of high school before he hit the show. For 16 years at Buck, he gave the best he had. And when the Hall of Fame came calling, everyone was glad. Yeah. Now, there's a street over by the ballpark named to celebrate a simple man with the softest hands who ever played second base. Now, every little leaguer in every ball yard, whoever turned a double play, tips his hat. And lays another brick on Mazeroski Way. <laughs> and he cried that day when I played I know he did. I, uh, and he stood there the whole time you were doing it, right behind the speaker. The nicest yeah. guy in the yeah, world. He is. Really is. A, a dear true, friend and great guy. It's, uh, I don't really know him, but I yeah. kind of idolize him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the legacy for who he is. And he's lived a long time. And yeah. I like baseball, you know. I know. So do I, man. What's that, the era we grew up? You know, baseball was it. As what? little kids, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's I right. remember where I was when that. My dad was at that game, and my dad was at the Immaculate Reception. Oh, oh was that right? So that I was raised right. by a sports, you know, <laughs> yeah, a sports father in a sports time. Yeah. I should have been a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been part of your uh, secret to the longevity of playing music and the kind of staying relevant and in the scene and going through all the changes that have happened. You know, for me, Byron, one of the best parts was I started so young and I rolled out everything else in life but music. Mm. And it was not a decision that I even knew what I was doing. 
But I decided to not learn anything about anything but music. So I started as a teenage boy and became obsessed. And I never worked in my life. I'm 72 years old now. <laughs> <laughs> and I never worked. You know, I've always just played music. And I've always just been happy to play music. And, and I set standards for myself. You know, once I was in my early 20s, I was playing in lounge bands. And I hated my guts when I was doing it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't play other people's music. I didn't have my own music. Yeah. But I knew I yeah. couldn't do that. Yeah. So when I started, like with the Diamonds, I started taking songs that I love and I would create new arrangements for them. Yeah. And that's how I got into business. I was kind of like the janitor at the studio I worked at. <laughs> but I would do this work and then my stuff kept getting noticed. Yeah. And I really was the least talented guy in the scene. I just kept working really hard. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought about anything else, never tried anything else. Like Jack said, I play uh, you know, guitar, bass, keyboards sing and write and I mean I just I'm totally and I work constantly I'm yeah, like a yeah. compulsive nutbag I don't do anything other than work I it think seems to keep you young spirited it just <laughs> seems like I'm you, you into love what it. you do you know I'm insane <laughs> I really am insane I, I work constantly I mean I literally work seven days a week all day every day I don't do anything that doesn't have to do with working and studying Nice. I'm a nutbag. It's part of your heritage. I don't know if that's nutty. I think my, that's my, great. Our grandfather was that way, Mike Camino, and he 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 worked his whole life. And when Mike Camino, I like that. Mike Camino. <laughs> I like, that's Bob Dot. Yeah, he was the best man, and you know, it, and I, I talk too many stories about him, but I, I just wanted, I could see that in you. I could, I, that's the way you grew up. And it was, but what was your influence growing up, music wise? Well, you know, I. I, a lot of stuff, you know, like, like like everybody in our age group, the Beatles and the Stones, you know, the Stones more than the Beatles. But, you know, um, and just records, you know, I, I like soul music like crazily. Yeah. You know, all the stack stuff. That's, yeah. Um, I like Philadelphia soul. I, I liked Motown stuff. I just liked music with soul. And when, when the music started getting sis, sissified and prog rock and all that stuff, yeah. like yes and that stuff, I couldn't handle that. That wasn't me. Yeah. You know, when, when it lost that soul, the, yeah, the, really urgency, the urgency, yeah, 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 the urgency of someone making it happen. You know, that that excitement when it became scientific. Yeah, I'm like, ah, that ain't me. And and and, and when it became mechanical, you know, yeah. I, to this day I don't use no pedals when I play. Yeah, I plug my guitar in and I throw. You just play. Yeah, I right. I say, uh, play naked. Because, you know, the people don't say this, but when you, all them pedals, every one of them pedals, it separates from, it separates you from the sound. Yeah. Yeah. I like the sound to be like here and here yeah. and then straight on. Yes. And if I don't have it, I don't have it, you know, that night. We've talked about this quite a bit on some of our other shows, about how things have changed and how hard it is now. Because when we were starting out, you did a vibe from the other players. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Nowadays, you can send a recorder, you put the drum track down and send it to a guy in L.A. to do the bass, and you can send it to, you know what I mean? That's how people do it nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but it doesn't have that same camaraderie, you know what I mean? I think you wrote a song about camaraderie, but anyway, it was... Uh, <laughs> and it doesn't have that, you know, a lot of times bands and, and uh, mu musical movements come from neighborhoods. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, like the Beatles and the Stones. Yeah. These guys all that knew each yep, other, you yeah. know, like the, in San Francisco. I remember when I was 18 years old, I left, I just got out of high school. I was in jail two weeks after high school because I tried to thumb to California <laughs> to show them what I knew. And I didn't know a damn thing. <laughs> but I wanted to get this because there was a scene in San Francisco and I just wanted to be a part of it. I just, yeah. And I ended up in jail. Did you really? In Ohio, yeah. I got another song about that. <laughs> it's called, the name of that song is called I Was Really Good at Being Young. I was really good. About guys like me, songs are sung. <laughs> <laughs> even, even if it's only by myself. Yeah, it's uh, good. But what the hell. I just love it because you know, he does a lot still with Moondog and those guys. You know, Moondog's my best friend. He's such a good man. We gotta have him on the show. I mean, yeah. it's, it's another one. But anyway. I will talk to the dog. Yeah, the dog. I'll talk to the dog, <laughs> and I'll, I will make sure he comes down. But I, I love it whenever you're at his place. You know, because that's like your place. You know, <laughs> it is. And what happened years ago? About seven, eight years ago, I was playing Moondogs all the time. I played like at least once a month or mm -hmm. twice a month. And I was doing dates around town. I was doing a date in the strip, like every Friday night, 
and I was killing it. Yeah. And then the guy shut the club down, my friend Bruce. And, uh, and so I called Mooney and I says, look, I says, Moondog has another club besides Moondog. It's right next door. It's called the Starlight. Right. And I said, I'm going to start playing the Starlight every Friday night. He says, I don't want you. I don't want to do that. I want music over there because it's a restaurant. Mm -hmm. yeah. I says, yeah. that's what you say. I says, but I'm doing it. <laughs> and I'm starting this Friday night. And that was seven years ago. Yeah. I've been there every Friday night yeah. unless I'm out of town. For, uh, and it's, it kind of really is, it's like a, somebody told me the other day, it's like a cult. You know, that's like yeah. weird people. Well, it is. It's and people that like the music, but they, you know, when I started working and I'm doing my thing, people would say, why do you talk so much? I'll say, why do you say all that stuff? I say, by the time I'm done, here's what's going to happen. People are going to look at other bands and say, why don't they talk? <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to influence the scene and make people that's understand. It. If you're playing and you're singing, entertain them people. That's Give right. of yourself. Yeah. Open yourself up. Even if you got to make start laughing at yourself, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that conversation, you know what happens? They start knowing you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And they'll stay long enough so that you can trick them. Yeah. And they're liking and the music. Give them some music. <laughs> that's my that's my philosophy. I shouldn't yeah. be saying this because people are going to be stealing my <laughs> stealing my wonderful techniques that I've used to stay at the bottom of the barrel for my whole life. I'm a musical catfish. I want to fist fight all the guys at the top of the pond because you know when you fight a catfish, you better you better be dropping some bombs. You he's want to a kill musical that catfish. catfish. We, we gotta write that song. That's our next yeah. song. That's our next single. That's what I am. I've been on, I've been eating off the bottom of the tank my whole career, and I am a nasty little monkey. You don't want to get in the ring with me because I'll chop you off at your ankles. I love it. I love it. I'll shorten you up a little bit. Well, well let me tell you what we do now. We, we do this thing. It's called rapid fire. Rapid, rapid fire. fire, right? And we're gonna ask you. I might be good for that. Oh, oh, you're great for that. You're perfect. You think I got? Think I can handle rapid fire? I have a feeling you can. <laughs> so we're gonna ask you something old, something new, something treasured, and something true. The true okay. part I'll have trouble with. Oh okay. no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask that last one. You start okay. it off. I'll tell you why. All right, something old. Not you. Don't say you. <laughs> All the older guests always like to say themselves, but like something old that people don't know about you or that you, you, know, you really cherish or something like that. You don't know that I love Louis Prima? Oh, yeah. I love Frank Sinatra. I love the old Guinea music from back in the day because it makes me feel warm in my heart yeah. and it reminds me of my mom. I love it. It's fun. That. There you go. Very good. And something new. Something new that you, tr you treasure. I'll tell you something new. I've been working with this kid. He's new. He's 28 years old out of New York City. His name is Solomon Hicks. He's a singer, guitar player, yes. and we've been doing dates together. And I think we're gonna start recording together. And uh, that's something new. That, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah, and it's it's nice to have this kid that uh, believes in the old ways yep. and wants to know how it was and and wants to find his path yes. through the old ways and not. That's right. The new ways. He and plays you, you naked. You were just with him. Uh, yeah, we just did Cleveland together. We did Moondog. Pittsburgh and then yeah, Cleveland. That's right. That's right. Something treasured. My health. Being a, being this old and yeah, still yeah. be able to practice every day mm -hmm. and to study every day and to go out. Two weeks ago, I played five hours and fifteen minutes straight. <laughs> Didn't take a piss. <laughs> I love it. Five hours, 15 minutes straight. You're, you're my people. <laughs> that ain't no bull crap. No, I believe you. I, well, Down at the strip at uh, the Leaf and Bean. I, it was good. The next one was something true, but you always just told me something true. <laughs> you just play for five and a half hours. <laughs> Not five and a half, five hours and 15 minutes. Oh. <laughs> and the only reason I stopped was because my bass player was running out of gas. And, and who's that guy? Harry Bottoms. I know. <laughs> And I always, I always say, you girls like Harry Bottoms, don't you? <laughs> well, some of you do. Oh, man. <laughs> That's Harry, Harry Bottoms. He's, he's a pretty good cat. Harry's a good dude, man. Yeah, he's been with me over 30 years. I've been dragging him around. I was there the night he got de pantsed on stage. <laughs> Byron, I was there. Uh, I believe you. I was right beside him. I feel like I'm there. I was, Tell me something. I was, true. I was a small part of that miracle. Oh, Pants. man. He just stood there with the biggest smile on his face. That yeah. happened in New Jersey, so it really don't matter. Oh, something enough. true, though. Something true? Yeah. The truth is, I'm going to keep on keeping on as long as I can. I'm going to try and stand up each and every day and be somebody. I'm going to try to be throwing it and showing it. I want to fist fight all the other musicians, mm -hmm. and then I want to shake their hand. And say, let's go study. Let me see yeah. if I can help build you into something bigger, stronger, better. 
Oh, Something more original. Let me see what you got in your shorts. <laughs> Let me help you find your place. Find the inner, the beauty inside each and every one of us. Because each and every one of us is beautiful. I didn't realize I was beautiful until about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> you don't believe that? No, no, you said true. That, true. that wasn't true. <laughs> that wasn't true. What we're going to do, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, let's jam, all right? Let's do it. Let's have some fun. Let's fire. We'll be right back. I'm going to bring it to you. <laughs> What's up everybody? Welcome back to Byron's Bodega. Today I want to share something kind of personal. Um, a lot of people don't know that I went to school for art, graphic design, two-dimensional work, stuff like that. And one of the things that I got into very early was painting with ink. This is a picture of my son Tommy that I painted way back in the day uh, when I was really trying to make my way as an artist. Um, and I was a single parent at a very young age and he was sort of the nucleus of my life. Actually, I did a little book in art school called The Nucleus of My Being, which was dedicated to him. So this is artwork that I have hanging in my house. I think that's what kind of leads into why I like marketing, promotion, album artwork, all that stuff. But I wanted to share this personal moment with you, this uh, picture of my son, Tommy. Are you ready for it? We're rolling, let's go. What we'd like to do, <laughs> especially for you, is a number for the ladies. I mean, I like to remind the ladies, Byron, that men are people too. <laughs> <laughs> and as men, we have wants, needs, hopes, and dreams. And we just hope you ladies would include us <laughs> in the mind space that you occupy. It's a little thing called She Crazy. I'd like to send it out to all the crazy women. <laughs> you know, a couple, a couple months ago, I was playing in um, Columbus, Ohio at the public radio station. You know how public radio was Absolutely. very square and woo -woo. And uh, I could tell that I, I was um, different. No. And she, she asked me about, she says, well, she says, I, I, did a, I played a song that I wrote for my father. She says, oh, you're a family person. I said, very much. She says, do you have brothers and sisters? I said, I have a wonderful sister to the public radio lady. And she goes, what does your sister do? And I looked her right in the eye and I went, She's a breeder. <laughs> oh, man. It was so fantastic. <laughs> I was never prouder of myself. Because when you say it in real life, that's one thing. But when you say it to a public radio lady, <laughs> you're really putting the meat on the table. I was never. Pr I think that might be one of the greatest moments of my life. <laughs> she's a breeder. I said it like my uncle Larry would have said, "Hey, she's a breeder." Oh my God. Uh, for the girls, she crazy. <laughs> and I think both of you guys know, and tell me if I'm wrong when I say this, these crazy women is what makes the world go around. Right? <laughs> Love makes the world go around. <laughs> <laughs>
other. You can hear us all over town. We make up in the bedroom. I'm picking up what she's putting down. She crazy. Makes love patiently. She crazy as can be. Same kind of crazy as me. Well, well, well. Well, well she crazy. She cooking goose. Crazy. Turn the monkey loose. She's crazy. Keep you up all night.